So today on the program, we are focusing on question two on the November 5th ballot here in Massachusetts, which deals with the MCAS graduation requirement. And a yes vote on this question would eliminate the MCAS as a graduation requirement for high school students here in Massachusetts. Today, we're focusing on uh, opponents of that question, the Protect Our Kids Future No On To campaign. And joining us is the president of the National Parents Union, Kerry Rodriguez, to talk us more about that. So, Kerry, nice to meet you, first of all. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. This is a, a question that's uh, drawn a lot of uh well, comments from both sides, certainly. Uh, question two, there are five ballot questions uh, on the ballot this year. So if you could, before we talk about uh, your position on this question, tell me about the National Parents Union, because I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, the, the most important title I have is being Matthew Miles and David's mom. And frankly, that's why I started Massachusetts Parents United and the National Parents Union. Massachusetts Parents United started about 10 years ago here in Massachusetts. And uh, we started in, in five different communities, reaching out to parents, talking about their priorities, what they wanted to see change economically and education to make sure that our center were our, our kids were at the center of policies we are developing and our politics. So the National Parents Union is the modern independent voice of American families. We have 1.7 million members in all 50 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. And on a monthly basis, we reach about 22 million families across the Commonwealth or across the nation, rather. And here in the Commonwealth, uh, we reach hundreds of thousands of parents and can make sure that their voices and their perspectives are included in the policies that we develop. So I've been organizing for a very long time, but the reason why I got involved in you know, organizing period around parent advocacy is because, again, I'm Matthew Miles and David's mom, and my oldest son uh, is in 11th grade, uh, and he's a great kid, very academically gifted, but also happens to have autism and ADHD. Um, so my journey with him and trying to navigate his educational experiences and subsequently my my other sons as well, I have a house full of boys, um, has really led me on this journey to make sure that we're putting their best interests at the center of, of the decisions that we make. So has the organization uh, uh, lobbied for similar questions like this in other states? Uh, so actually, this is not something that we see happening in other states because of the fact that here in Massachusetts, about 30 years ago, we had education reform and a, a really key and critical part of that was making sure that we have a, an assessment so we know how these reforms are working out, whether or not we're delivering for our kids, and how we need to better reallocate resources across the Commonwealth. This We actually have the gold standard here in Massachusetts. There's only two other states in the country, Mississippi and Alabama, that do not have a graduation requirement. So really, you know, a lot of states are kind of looking at us and saying, this is what you're going to do. I mean, I, I was just speaking with the with the state commissioner in North Dakota the other day, who was very surprised to see this move in Massachusetts, because actually in North Dakota and many other states, we're actually seeing increasing requirements. She's just adding a brand new requirement for graduation around cybersecurity um, and computer science, because what we need to be doing is actually raising the bar for our kids to make sure that they are ready to be competing in a global economy and are prepared for economic mobility, the jobs and the economy of the future. So uh, just to be clear, the, the voting uh, in, in no on this, you know, eliminating MCAS would still uh, have an MCAS test, just not a graduation requirement. Is that right? Yeah, and let's be clear, we're, we're asking folks to vote no to get rid of the, 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 the proposal that would eliminate the, the question. It's a little confusing how they put these things on the ballot, but we are actually asking folks to vote no, because what we want to do is preserve this requirement that tells our, that actually guarantees, it proves that our kids have reach the level of proficiency that we need them to have. So instead of just having high school diplomas that are participation trophies or certificates of attendance, it actually shows that they've been able to demonstrate proficiency in reading, in math, in science. So I, again, we wanna be clear that this is, this is a, a no vote that we are asking for. So when, when it comes right down to it, you know, it, unless we keep the requirement of MCAS, uh, the only state requirements around high school graduation will be two things, four years of, of physical education and civics. There will be no reading requirement. 
there will be no math requirement. There will be no science requirement. There will only be two state requirements to show that you have demonstrated proficiency. And yes, you will have to continue to take MCAS because it is a federal requirement. Because in order for us to get federal resources, the federal government expects us to demonstrate that we're investing wisely and we can show that we are serving kids well. So it doesn't make a lot of sense that we would get rid of a state requirement that is really important in proving to us as parents, to our children, and to the communities that benefit that we have done our job in education. And I think that's really clearly why you see that the governor of Massachusetts, Maura Healey, the lieutenant governor, the Senate president, the speaker of the house, the secretary of education are all encouraging folks to vote no on this question. They do not agree with getting rid of MCAS as a requirement. Of course, the, the argument uh, on the other side is from the, the state teachers union uh, is that the MCAS graduation requirement forces them to teach to the test uh, and, you know, it does not allow them to focus on the individual student. So how do you respond to that? Well, this is about focusing on the ind individual student and keeping a promise to ensure that every student in Massachusetts has access to a high quality education. But I love our teachers. I think that they are talented and creative and wonderful, but they also need to have some guidelines in terms of making sure we all have a pathway to getting our kids to proficiency. And so it makes sense that yes, there are gonna be standards and we need to check in with our kids to make sure that they are making progress towards proficiency so that we are keeping that promise. Again, we need to make sure that our diplomas mean something. Under the Massachusetts State Constitution, we guarantee the right to a high quality education. If we are simply exposing kids to education and we're not getting them to proficiency, what ends up happening is that you have a high school diploma that doesn't mean anything. And so when you get to a community college, a four-year college, you try to take a, a, a competency determination to get into a trade to, and an aptitude test. If you don't have the skills necessary, what happens then? We've lied to our kids saying that they are ready for these next steps. And what that ends up, what ends up happening in those circumstances is that kids end up taking years of remedial courses just to get them to the level so that they can enter a trade or that they can take a college level course because we haven't done the job of K through 12 education and we haven't given them a, a diploma that actually means that they're ready for those next steps. That's not doing right by our kids. Another argument, I have to play devil's advocate here, uh, just to, to give a fair perspective, um, is that the MCAS is hard on kids who don't test well, don't take tests well, but they may be proficient in, in those courses, in that, in that curriculum. They just can't reflect that in an MCAS test. Well, you know, taking tests is a part of life. You know, we're talking about the 10th ten, grade MCAS exam. There's also another test that a lot of kids take in 10th grade. It's called a driving test. And, you know, kids get very nervous about taking a driving test, but we need them to prove proficiency. We need them to prove competency. And we need to show them that you've got to achieve a particular level of proficiency before you are ready to take the next steps and take on a responsibility like driving on the road. So I, I understand there are some kids that get nervous about tests, but tests are a part of life, improving proficiency and that you have achieved a per particular level that you are ready to move on is critically important. I would also bring to your attention that, you know, just before we spoke today, I was actually taking a look at the levels of participation for MCAS in the city of Quincy. So when you take a look at how many kids are participating in MCAS, student participation rates, because we've been told by a long time by the MTA, we don't have to take this test. You can write a letter to your principal and opt out. 99% of students in Quincy take the MCAS exam because students believe it's important, parents believe it's important because high school diplomas need to be meaningful. We need to make sure our kids are prepared for the next steps and to be able to check in on their educational help to make sure they don't need additional assistance. MCAS is not a punishment. It doesn't create inequities. It reveals some of the deficits that some of our kids have so we can get to work and make sure that we're making the investments that are necessary to get them to where they need to be. And we owe that to our kids. Sure. Of course, the, te you know, the, the, the teachers union will argue that we'll still have those results. It's just, you know, we can, we can address the deficiencies. It's just not a requirement that they pass it to graduate. Well, 
again, there are a lot of requirements that our kids are, are going to need to meet in order to achieve in life. And frankly, again, parents and families feel very strongly that the MCAS is an important metric to ensure that they are ready for those next steps. So again, just like when we have to take a driver's license exam, if you want to become an apprentice in a trade union, if you want to be able to take a college level course, you're going to have to, the first thing you're going to do when you go to college is take a placement exam to figure out, you know, whether or not you're ready to take a college level course. So we're not doing our kids any favors by saying that this is not a requirement by making high school diplomas meaningless and basically just you know, telling them as long as the vibes are good, we're going to push you forward. We need more than vibes. We need a, a promise kept about our children being prepared for the next steps in life. And this is this is a very important one. Did you looking at the Quincy results? Did you happen to see what the what the actual uh, results were, the scores, the percentage of kids who passed? Yeah, I, I, there there are kids that definitely have have work to do. And thankfully, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, MCAS being a uh, a high high stakes exam, um, but we have multiple shots to actually take in past the MCAS exam. Quincy actually does very well in terms of getting high rates of students to pass the MCAS on the very first take. Because again, we're talking about a 10th grade test to get a high school, a high school diploma. These are actually eighth grade skills that we test kids on in the 10th grade to tell them that in 12th grade, you're gonna get a full diploma. So to be honest with you, again, going back to my example of other states, we actually need to be doing more to make sure our kids are prepared, to make sure they're ready to take those next steps because they're gonna be competing in a global economy. The other thing that gets very tricky about this is that if we do not have a statewide requirement, that leaves it to every city and town to determine whatever high school is going to actually mean, which again, leads to chaos. Can you imagine if, you know, the city of Quincy had a very high um, requirement in terms of excellence in driving that we would want everyone to achieve in the city of Quincy if they, you know, want to be able to drive a car. That would be great. But people drive outside of Quincy. They're going to have to interact with drivers that are outside of Quincy. And let's say they come into, to, into you know, interaction with someone from Boston and they don't have as high a requirement. What is going to happen there? What is gonna happen when a Quincy driver goes to Wellesley where maybe the standards are even higher than what we see in Quincy? You know, again, we have to have this balance. We have to have a foundation. We have to have a set of standards that says everyone in the Commonwealth needs to achieve this particular level before they're ready to move on. It's the same in education. We owe it to our kids to ensure that every child, regardless of their zip code, regardless of their demographic background, their geographic background, have all been, been fulfilled that promise that we've been talking about, that they have had access to a high quality ed education and they have achieved a level of proficiency that guarantees they're ready to move on. Are there um, provisions within the MCAS now, do you know, uh, Carrie, for, for uh, students with uh, learning disabilities, you know, folks like your son on, on the spectrum? Absolutely. And to be honest with you, I, I'm one of the few people involved in on either side of this campaign that is actually living this in real time right now. You know, I have a 10th grader, again, who, who just moved on to the 11th grade, who just passed the 10th grade MCAS. And he actually attends the SEEM Collaborative, which is a therapeutic public school setting for kids that have autism and ADHD that need assistance. I have a kid who, again, has a 56 page IEP and was able to successfully pass the MCAS. Because you know what, in Massachusetts, we're not going back to the days where special needs children are, are relegated to only being for certain academic purposes or are, are confined to making pizza boxes. My child, is capable of proficiency. My child is capable of excellence. Just because he has a different lens does not mean we're gonna give up on him academically. And so kids like mine across the Commonwealth are showing that they can pass this exam. They can get a full high school diploma and they can, ma they can master these skills because we no longer give up on them. That is the promise of MCAS as well, is saying that the, every child in, in Massachusetts, regardless of their background, regardless of some of their challenges, we can get them to proficiency. And frankly, when we worked on the Student Opportunity Act in terms of allocating more resources to our communities for children like mine, who are Latino, who are special needs. I mean, my city actually gets a lot of money for, for a child because of how we've updated the funding formula. 
that money needs to be invested in our kids who maybe need a little help, maybe need a little support, maybe need to take the alternative MCAS exam, which also exists. But again, there are many pathways that our kids have to successfully completing the MCAS, to getting our kids to proficiency. And without that guarantee, unfortunately, what we will see is that some kids we may just give up on. Fundamentally, there, there are a lot of opportunities that our, our children have, our children with special needs, our children who are English language learners, who are deeply important to my organization, um, in terms of having additional support, having additional resources that are provided so that they can also achieve proficiency. And I would say, you know, a lot of this comes down to about 700 kids every single year that are unable to successfully pass the MCAS exam and are struggling. And to me, that that's not a, it's not a punishment, it's a call to action for all of us because those 700 kids are important. And when these this particular subgroup of kids aren't able to achieve that proficiency, it tells us we gotta get to work. It tells us we need more resources, more resources, more high quality teaching, maybe more time and instruction, more high impact tutoring. And we need to make those investments to get those kids there. The solution is not to lower the bar for everyone. The solution is to invest more to make sure those kids are also able to achieve. Do you know, is the MCAS also a requirement in private schools? So actually, it's not a requirement in private schools. Private schools and Catholic schools actually have different tests that they take. It's not the MCAS, but they have their own version of uh, a standardized test that they take. So the the conversation around, well, you know, kids that are in private school, kids who are in Catholic school get out of any kind of testing or assessment uh, simply is not true. The uh, latest MCAS results just just earlier this this year showed um, a deficiency, certainly that connected to the pandemic. Yeah, and and I would I would argue that we need this data now more than ever. You know, our, ch our children have really been through an unprecedented crisis, and especially the kids who right now are taking the tenth grade MCAS. Do we think we're doing a kindness to these kids by looking the other way and saying, you know what, you've been through the pandemic, so we're just going to we're just going to move you along. You know, it's not a kindness when you try to get into college and take a college level course and then find out you are not prepared and you have to take two years of remedial courses before you can take a college level course because those courses are not free. And it's on the shoulders of parents and families and students to have to pay additional money to remediate, to get to the point where we can even start taking those college level courses, which really puts a lot of parents, families, and especially our kids under the gun. And that's why you see lower rates of, of completion because we're not doing an adequate job of actually preparing them for the challenges that are gonna be ahead. Because again, the world is not going to give kids a pass because they've been through a pandemic. So it's our jobs as the grownups to dig in and get to work and to figure out what's missing and to get to work to make sure that we're getting them to where they need to be. If uh, folks would like to learn more, Carrie, about uh, No Unto, Protecting Our Kids' Future, how do they do that? You can find Protecting Our Kids' Future No Onto on all kinds of social media. You can visit our website. We would happy to have you join the campaign, find more information, uh, and talk to an organizer who is happy to answer any of your questions. But again, we encourage everyone to do their research, to listen to the folks in the state, the leaders of the state, including the governor, the lieutenant governor, the Senate president, your local state representatives, your local state senators, be in conversation with them. You know, a meaningful diploma is important, not only to our kids, but for the future of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and our economy 10 or 15 years from now. We want to make sure that Massachusetts has strong communities, has a strong workforce, and that we are prepared for our kids to enter that and be successful and access economic mobility in the future. Well, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk with you about this, and uh, hopefully we've got uh, uh, some information out uh, from your side of the story. Thank you so much, and enjoy your day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.